Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Can Viruses Save Lives? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in Clinical Therapeutics, published on September 1, 2020. Research conducted by Tiffany Long, Anne Charlotte Salabaria, and Duane R. Roach. Read by Nicolette Wands. Abstract. Have you ever heard of bacteriophages? They're tiny viruses that can infect and kill bacteria including the harmful bacteria that make us sick. Scientists discovered bacteriophages, also known as phages, over a century ago, and they are actually all around us. Researchers have found phages in sewage, soil, and even in our bodies. What if we use the natural enemy of bacteria to our advantage? Can phages protect us against bacterial diseases? Researchers have used phage to treat disease in the past, but were they successful? We reviewed clinical reports of phage therapy for the last 15 years. Our research showed that phages can be quite helpful and phage therapy was successful against bacterial infections. This is really important because antibiotic resistance has become a major threat to our health. Introduction. Did you know that some experimental treatments against dangerous bacterial infections come from soil or sewage water? There are viruses called bacteriophages or phages that hunt and kill bacteria. Once the phage gets inside the bacterial cell, it takes over and forces it to make more viruses, and then finally kills the bacteria. This includes the bacteria that make people sick. For many years, doctors overlooked phage therapy since antibiotics were so effective. Another microbiologist, Alexandra Fleming, discovered the first antibiotic, penicillin, in 1928. Since then, scientists have discovered and produced many more types of antibiotics to cure illnesses like pneumonia, tuberculosis, and meningitis. Sadly, because of evolution, some bacteria have learned to resist antibiotics, so they don't work as well. Nowadays, antibiotic-resistant bacteria are a huge threat. Some pathogens have even become resistant to multiple antibiotics. This makes it more and more difficult for doctors to prescribe the right medication. A microbiologist named Felix Durrell, along with other scientists, discovered phages in the early 20th century. He described an invisible microbe that kills the bacteria that causes dysentery. After this important discovery, he tested it by attempting to cure sick chickens. Felix Durrell isolated or separated phages from the poop of hens that had recently recovered from infection and successfully treated other chickens with a deadly bacterial infection. He even successfully treated a person with dysentery. This is how phage therapy began. Figure 1 shows an image of a phage. A phage is a virus that infects bacteria. This image was taken using electron microscopy, a technology that lets us photograph very small things. And the good news is, phages are everywhere. Scientists have found them in sewage water, rivers, soil, wherever there are bacteria. Then they purify or clean the phages in the lab so there are no other substances. After that, scientists replicate or multiply the phages on bacterial cells and purify them once again. Then these tiny viruses are ready to treat dangerous bacterial infections. So now scientists and physicians are once again looking at phage therapy. Can viruses actually come to the rescue? Does this therapy help people? Are there any problems with it? These are the questions we wanted to answer. Figure 2 shows an image of the phage cycle, where the phage attaches to the bacterial cell and injects its DNA. Next, bacterial DNA breaks down and the cell starts to create new viruses. Next, phages make the cell burst and release new viruses to infect other bacterial cells. Methods We looked through case reports and research articles published between 2005 and 2020 about phage therapy. Here's what we wanted to know. Did the patient's health improve? We call this a clinical outcome. What bacteria did the researchers want to target? How were the phages given to patients? Did the patients receive an injection? Were there any side effects? Did the bacteria develop resistance against the phages? Did the researchers use both phage therapy and antibiotic therapy? There were some aspects of phage therapy that we wanted to understand better. How to choose the right phage or mix of phages? How to administer it? where, how often, and how much. Results. Phage therapy shows promising results. In many of the cases we reviewed, phages help the patients without the bacteria becoming resistant to the phages. Moreover, phage therapy has helped not only humans, but also pets. 
a five-year-old St. Bernard dog received phages to treat a bad ear infection. Only 27 hours later, the air condition improved, leading to the dog's full recovery in a few months. However, in most cases, we found that doctors used a combination of phages and antibiotics. This made it harder to figure out if the phages alone were helpful. A big advantage of phages is that they do very well against bacterial biofilms, something antibiotics don't fight well against. Furthermore, they work well against a variety of bacteria. Unfortunately, in several cases, there were negative side effects. Some side effects, like stomach ache or toothache, were mild. Others, like serious allergic reactions, were life-threatening. Based on the data we reviewed, choosing the right phages can be difficult. For example, if the phage infects a wide range of bacteria, there is a risk they can change a patient's microbiome. It can also be hard for doctors to decide how many phages a person needs since phages are not chemicals like antibiotics. They replicate or reproduce in the cells by themselves. Figure 3 shows a summary of phage therapy against different infections of the body. Was it successful or not? In the eyes, it was successful against one species of bacteria. In the gut, successful against one species of bacteria, unsuccessful against one species of bacteria. In the ear, successful against one species of bacteria. In the prostate, successful against one species of bacteria. In the nose, successful against one species of bacteria. In the skin, successful against two species of bacteria, unsuccessful against two species of bacteria. In the heart, successful against four species of bacteria. In the joints, successful against three species of bacteria and unsuccessful against one species of bacteria. In the entire body, successful against two species of bacteria. In the urinary tract, successful against six species of bacteria. And in the bone, successful against seven species of bacteria. And in the lung, successful against six species of bacteria. Discussion. Antibiotic resistance is a serious problem. Eventually, we may run out of reliable antibiotics, so it's very important to find an alternative. Phages, a natural enemy of bacteria, are an excellent option. The data we reviewed proved that they can be very beneficial. A combination of antibiotic and phage therapy showed the most promising results. These treatments used together seem to help each other because 1. Sometimes the drugs help the phages to replicate the ester. 2. Phages can sometimes affect bacterial resistance, making the bacteria respond better to the medicine. Still, there are several things to consider. Phage resistance is also a problem. Out of 12 phage therapy clinical studies, phage resistance happened in 7 cases, but it's also important to note that most of the researchers in other cases didn't test for phage resistance. This is most likely because the therapy was successful. Side effects can be not only unpleasant, but life-threatening. More clinical trials are necessary to determine the best formulas and methods to apply phage therapy, and hopefully we can develop another shield against infectious diseases. Conclusion One reason for antibiotic-resistant bacteria is the incorrect use of antibiotics. This is why it's very important to take your drugs exactly as your doctor has prescribed. Don't stop taking them early, even if you feel better. The very best prevention, though, is to avoid infection. Wash your hands regularly with soap. Prepare your food with care, check your vaccination calendar regularly, and make sure you're up to date. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.